In this video, I will explain how to derive Marshallian demand functions, sometimes also called uncompensated demand functions. So let's jump into an example. This says, consider the utility function u is equal to x to the one-half times y to the one-half. Find the Marshallian demand functions for goods x and y. Now, when we talk about Marshallian demand functions, our goal is to maximize our utility subject to our budget constraint. So let's write that down. We want to maximize, maximize our utility, which in this case is given by u is equal to x to the one half times y to the one half, subject to, let's say st, subject to the budget constraint, which is m, the income must be equal to the price of x times the quantity of x plus the price of y times the quantity of y. So the way that we're going to start solving this is we're going to write down the Lagrangian, L. And that will be equal to the utility function, so let's say x to the one-half times y to the one-half, plus lambda times, we'll have our income m minus the right-hand side of this budget constraint. So we'll say p of x times x minus the price of y times the quantity of y. So this is our Lagrangian. Let's go ahead and simplify it a little bit by distributing this lambda into the parentheses. So we'll get x to the one-half, y to the one-half, plus lambda times m, minus lambda times p of x times x, minus lambda times p of y times y. So the first step is we're going to take the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x. So when we do that, when we take the derivative of this whole equation with respect to x, we get one-half times x to the negative one-half times y to the one-half, minus lambda times the price of x. And what we're going to do is set this equal to zero and solve for the price of x. So when we do that, we'll get lambda times the price of x is equal to one half times x to the negative one half times y to the one half. And to solve for the price of x, we'll divide both sides by lambda. So we'll find that the price of x is equal to one half x to the negative one half times y to the one half divided by lambda. Now we're going to repeat this process, but we're going to find the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to y. So that will be equal to, so this equation, the derivative of this equation with respect to y, that would be one half times x to the one half, y to the negative one half. And for the derivative of this term, we get minus lambda times the price of y. So we'll set this one equal to zero as well and solve for the price of y. So if we move this term to the right-hand side, we find that lambda times the price of y is equal to one-half x to the one-half times y to the negative one-half. And dividing both sides by lambda, we find that the price of y is equal to one-half x to the one-half y to the negative one-half divided by lambda. And lastly, we're going to take the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to lambda. So the derivative of this formula with respect to lambda, we get m minus the price of x times x minus the price of y times y, and we'll solve for m, the income, so we can see that m will be equal to the price of x times x plus the price of y times y. Now the next step is we're going to focus on these first two equations, and we're going to solve for x and y. So I'll clear a little bit of space here. All right, so we said that we want to solve for x and y. The trick that we can use to do this is to take the price of x and divide it by the price of y. Because when we do this, we'll see that we'll be able to cancel out our lambdas. So let's go ahead and write that out. So we get 1 half times x to the negative 1 half times y to the 1 half divided by lambda. So this is our price of x. We're dividing it by the price of y. Now dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So let's flip the numerator and the denominator. So we'll get the lambda over one half times x to the one half times y to the negative one half. So when we do this multiplication, we can cross cancel the lambdas. The one halves will also cross cancel. And when we perform this multiplication, we can move x to the one half to the denominator to make it a positive one half. And we can also take this y to the negative one half and move it to the numerator to make it a positive y to the one half. So when we do that, we get, in the numerator, we'll have y to the one-half times y to the one-half, which is just y. And in the denominator, we'll have x to the one-half times x to the one-half, which is x. 
So we find that the price of x divided by the price of y is equal to y over x. So let's write that right here. Now once we've simplified it to this, it becomes very simple to solve for x and y. So if we cross multiply and set them equal to each other, we find that the price of x times x is equal to the price of y times y. So we can see that x is equal to the price of y times y divided by the price of x. And we can see that y will be equal to the price of x times x divided by the price of y. So now that we've solved for x and y, the very last step to get the Marshallian demand functions is we're going to plug these values into the budget constraint. So I'll clear a little bit of space here again. Okay, so here's what we found for x and y. We're going to take these values and plug them into the budget constraint to find our final Marshallian demand functions. So let's start by plugging in this quantity of y right here into the budget constraint for y. So we'll find that m is equal to the price of x times x plus the price of y times, for y we're plugging in this quantity. So we get x times the price of x divided by the price of y. So this price of y will cancel out with this price of y. We'll be left with x times the price of x plus another x times the price of x. So that's 2x times the price of x's. So we'll have m is equal to 2 times the price of x times x. Now to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides by 2 times the price of x. So we'll find that x is equal to m divided by 2 times the price of x. So this is our Marshallian demand function for good x. And if we want, we can write a little m as our subscript to denote the Marshallian demand function for x. Then we'll repeat the same process to find the Marshallian demand function for good y. So let's plug in this quantity of x right here into the budget constraint. So when we do that, we get m is equal to the price of x times y times the price of y divided by the price of x plus the price of y times y. So this price of x will cancel out with this price of x and we'll be left with y times the price of y plus another y times the price of y. So that's 2y times the price of y's. So we have m is equal to 2 times the price of y times y. And to solve for y, we just divide both sides by 2 times the price of y. So we'll get y is equal to m divided by 2 times the price of y. And we'll give this a little subscript m as well to denote this is the Marshallian demand function for good y. So these two demand functions tell us the quantities that will maximize our utility of each good based on the income and the price of each good. So that's the general process of how you can find the Marshallian demand functions when you are getting a utility function.